Advent is a season of waiting, of waiting in anticipation and hope for the coming of the Christ child. Today, let us turn to our Advent Carol, number 2090, and we will sing the third stanza and the fifth stanza as Elze lights the three Advent candles. Happy Advent. We were speaking, some of us were speaking earlier today. This feels something more like an early March morning than a mid-December morning. But um, is there anybody in here that right now today would prefer snow and ice? One, just, <coughs> just snow, just snow. <coughs> Still, this season, we have stuff going on, don't we? Just some things to talk about. First of all, Wednesday will be our last soup and study Wednesday night. Five o'clock, there will be soup. And those of you who were not here this past Wednesday to eat the soup that I made, you missed it. Because it, Carol, was it good? Yes, it was good. Yes, Jane, yes, it was good. It, and... I'm going to hurt myself. Okay, anyway, I am not making the soup this week, but it's still going to be good, and the study will be good. It will be, it, it is again the seasons of Advent, and it is the season of waiting, and how it is that we as older adults wait, as opposed to younger adults or children. Then on Saturday, uh, we are having a road trip. Some of us are going to be going to the St. Louis Basilica in St. Louis, obviously, to see their decorations and see how beautiful it will be. It is a spiritual event, and we will also be having lunch. Now, we have something of a non-specific uh, number of people who are going. Are any of you planning on attending? Jane. Okay, well, if there was an old Loretta, right. Um, I didn't see your hand go up, Loretta. Maybe it was because you're just not sure. <laughs> okay. That will be that will be Saturday. Then next next Sunday, something that that seems to have gotten a certain amount of confusion, and I want to help people understand what it is. Uh, we are having a blue Christmas service in our chapel. At least it's going to start in our chapel. Depends on. 
depends on how many people we have attend as to how many people we will act or where we will actually be at the end except that we have more people than we can fit in our chapel we'll just leave it here Christmas is a time of light and joy right Christmas is a happy time not always for everyone there are people who have experienced losses changes reversals all kinds of things in the past year or maybe in the past few years and for them Christmas is difficult in 1985 my grandmother died on December 23rd and uh, her funeral was on December 28th that made Christmas awfully strange for us that year and the next year it was still awfully strange the, ne the next year uh, we were good because, or at least I was good because I, I figured that I didn't have to go anyplace to see my grandmother because she was always sitting right here, either telling me what a good job I had done or what is wrong with you. Um, but you all would understand that because of the people who sit on your shoulders. Our blue Christmas service is specifically designed for those people who are feeling blue. That would be for whatever reason. And it will be, as I said, in our chapel, and it will be a time that will be designated to just say, you know, it's Christmas, and it's a wonderful time of the year, but you don't have to always feel wonderful about it. So please come. The entire community is invited. I have contacted the funeral homes, and they are inviting people, and, uh, and everyone is invited if you are of a mind to One last thing to say. And I have been wrestling with how to say this for the last couple of days, I guess. Please, even though we will try to worship today with joy and with exuberance for the coming of the Christ child, please do not think that any of us have our minds very far from the events in Connecticut on Friday. Please don't think that anyone is anything but grief-stricken by that horror. It is a serendipitous happenstance that I get to talk about finding a light in the fog today, a light in the darkness, Yet, it is important for those of us who are people of faith to be able to sustain and maintain our faith, even in the presence of darkness, that we have been called to be a light in dark times. So don't let us forget. Don't let us judge one another. But also, let us continue to look forward to the coming of the Christ child with joy and with hope. Part of what I do on a Sunday morning is during the Sunday school hour, I have appropriated responsibility to teach the middle school Sunday school class. And today, I am going to be offering them the opportunity to question me and to talk to me about those events, about what I know and what I don't know and and the presence of God and faith in all of this. And I would also say that I would open that to any of you. If you are interested, and if you would like to participate in that, uh, please uh, go to the middle school room. It's sometimes known as the Purple Room, right over here. And again, if we end up with more people than we can deal with in there, uh, we'll move someplace else, maybe. and our minds together in your love, gracious God. Help us light not only Advent candles, 
candles of faith. Help us bring light to a dark, dark world. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Let us stand and sing our Advent carol. David's greater son, hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set captive Of, the, of him, 211. And the beginning, we'll, read, we'll, we'll sing the verse and the refrain.
soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, who has looked with favor on me, a lowly servant. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is the name of the Lord, whose mercy is on those who fear God from generation to generation. The arm of the Lord is strong and has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has come to the aid of Israel, the chosen servant, remembering the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children. Most of you can sit down where you are, but if you are a child, I'd like you to come and sit with me. a light bulb all of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names they never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games then one foggy Christmas Eve Santa came to say Rudolph with your nose so bright won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him As they shouted out with glee Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer You'll go down in his story You'll go down in his story You'll go down in his story why are we singing about Rudolph in church? Because it's almost Christmas, yes, but is just, I mean, is Rudolph in the Bible someplace? No. Because I wanted to, that's right, and I, it's all about me, that's right. <laughs> 
You have what? Nine more days till Christmas. <laughs> okay, think about the story. Think about the song, okay? What happened? Hmm? First they made fun of him, right? But then, but then what happened? What happened? Yeah, but what happened? Why did they end up, what? It was the leader of the group, but why was he the leader of the group? What? It was foggy. They couldn't see. They were in a hard spot, and it was kind of dark and foggy, and they didn't know where to go. And Rudolph's nose lit up and led them the way. Now, when you're found, when you're in a dark spot, and I don't mean dark with the lights off. I mean dark kind of inside you, okay? Who gives you a light to help you find your way out? God or the baby Jesus. We talk about the, the before Jesus got there, we talk about the people being in darkness, about the Hebrews being in darkness. And sometimes we talk about us being in darkness. When we get confused and we get lost, and we just think that there are people who are picking on us or that things aren't going right or, you know, just everything isn't looking good and we need some sort of light to help us get out. Jesus does that. So did Rudolph. Rudolph doesn't, just like we said about Santa Claus, Rudolph doesn't do everything that Jesus does, but Rudolph helps us understand what it is that Jesus does and gives, gives Jesus some help and assistance there too. So, when you hear people singing about Rudolph, remember Jesus too, okay? Let's have a prayer. We thank you, God, for Jesus and for leading us out of the dark, foggy places. We also thank you for Rudolph, who helped Santa and who helped the reindeer, and who gives us a real clear picture of what it means to be led by someone. Amen. Thank you guys.
chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp and grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. May God bless the reading and the hearing of these words. It was a little God moment as you read those words, Polly, because for those of you who can't see, turn around and look, the sun has come out. And some of you are basking in the light of God as if there is an aura on you. The light has come once again. It is a gift. It is God's gift to us. Not just the sun, but the light of life, the light of all that we have. Let us remember, and as our ushers prepare themselves to receive our offering, let us be grateful.
gracious God, you have given so much to us, and you ask but for just a little in return. We are grateful, gracious God. We are grateful. As we enter into a time of prayer, I would ask that we keep these concerns and joys in our hearts. We're asked to pray for Norma Hackler, who will be having surgery soon. Prayers for George as well. Cindy is asking for prayers for all the teachers across the nation. Gretchen is offering prayers of, of uh, praise and congratulations and great adventure to the new EIU graduates and to Anna Stipe. Safe travels as she is off. And Patty also says that she is leaving. How soon are you leaving, Anna? January 16th to, uh, to leave for South Africa to student teach. You know, some people, you know, like go all the way to, I don't know, yoga and then some people go to South Africa there are other concerns and joys that you would have today certainly I, mean, I, I have a, a clergy colleague a clergy role model who is very close to his passage from this life into the next. And I will pray for him and for his family. And if you want to pray for my friend Tom and his wife Vera, please, please do so. But there are those other ones that you would have that are more personal and more connected just to you. But today I would, as you can probably expect, I would ask that we spend time in prayer for not just the families of those people in Connecticut, those children and teachers in Connecticut, but also for all of those families who have been so disrupted whenever, not just this past week, but whenever by the horrific violence that seems to be so prevalent in our country and in others. It seems as if, and, and now I'm going to get just a little preachy, I suspect, it seems to me that during the season of the coming of the Prince of Peace, we should be looking pretty hard at other ways to solve and resolve our issues and our difficulties and our differences other than by the use of violence. I'm going to pray up here and I would invite you if you are so moved to pray up here with me. Let us pray.
often it seems that we live in a land of darkness. That somehow we have not learned more ways of life and life. Have mercy on us. Have patience with us. pray that somehow or another we might be agents of your change, agents of your hope, agents of your life. We enter into this season of waiting and expectation, Lord, with joy and hope. into the manger, but also into our hearts. We pray once more for a baby's low cry and a mother's sweet prayer. We are blessed, Lord. We are blessed even in this darkness. When the oratorio of Handel's Messiah begins, when the vocal parts of it begin, there is a lovely tenor solo that starts off. And it asks for God's comfort to a people who need comfort. A little while later, there is a driving, bass solo that says the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. And that would be the comfort that comes. That would be the comfort that comes. A great light. It might be red and on the end of your nose. I don't know. There are internet places where not just preachers go, but preachers seem to hang out. Sort of like uh, virtual coffee shops, if you will, where we go and we talk and we listen. And most of the time I listen, I don't talk a whole lot on those things, but uh, it's 
been amazing in the last couple of days. Um, the uh, big question that all of the preachers have been asking one another, have you changed your sermon since the event on Friday morning? And to a person, we have all said, I kind of had a, a leg up on everybody because I wasn't preaching to the lectionary, but I was preaching to this sermon series that I have of using the iconic cultural figures of Christmas and Advent to, uh, to, to preach. And today I was preaching about Rudolph. I was preaching about a light in the darkness, a way to find ourselves out of foggy, foggy situations where we can't see, where we don't know where we're going, and we need somebody to guide us. And boy, isn't that where we are now. Isn't that where we are now. Of course... To tell the truth, weren't we there on Thursday too? And Wednesday? It just seems, seems to keep coming, doesn't it? It just seems to keep coming. That no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, no matter how things are, there's always another shoe that's going to fall someplace. There's always something else that's going to happen. I mean, can I get a witness here? Has anybody ever thought they've all had, had it all together? You knew where everything was, and then all of a sudden things just went to pieces? Anybody? Yeah, okay, you're right there with me. You're right there with me. Things that happen in such a hurry. Things that change so quickly. One of the questions some people ask is, why didn't God stop that sort of stuff? Why doesn't God stop any of that sort of stuff? Why does that stuff keep happening? As your pastor, I really wish I could answer that. Because it does seem that it sometimes God does change things. And other times God doesn't. And I can't tell you why one time one way and one time another. But you know what? That's not my job, is it? My job is not to make those kinds of decisions and those kinds of determinations. Why does somebody get to walk away from a car accident and somebody doesn't? Why does one person get sick and another one doesn't? I, I don't know those things. I may know those things someday. After I've gone from this life into the next, I might. Or I might not think they're important. But what I do know is this. First of all, in the midst of the deepest darkness we will ever see, in the midst of the thickest fog we will ever find, God will send us a light. In the midst of a world that is so filled with pain and oppression and hurt hurt so as to break your heart God will send a young woman to conceive and bear a child God will send a reindeer with a red light bulb on his nose 
God will send one of you to one another. God will give us a light. A light that shines in the darkness, as John said. A light that can never be put out. The other thing is this. That no matter what you might have heard, or what you might have read, God was there. Just as clearly as God is here right now. Just as clearly as God is holding those parents and holding those families. God is holding those other students. Just as clearly, as God is holding me and you right now. Because there is no place you can go. No place you can go where God is not with you. Yea, though I walk. Through the valley, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou I've never lost anyone to this kind of violence. One of your pastors did. The granddaughter of Milo Palmer was shooting at Northern Illinois University. And yet that does not make they are all not only the children of God but they are all our children too prayers are with them, sir. And our prayers are with those families who have children or even parents who are in the Middle East. Our prayers are with those people who are losing loved ones.
life may even be filled with darkness of a different sort. Let me assure you and affirm to you, God's light is here. you are with us, Lord. And we know that you fill us with hope and with strength and with life. Help us remain strong, not just for ourselves, but for one another. Help us be filled with To walk as a child of the light, I want to follow Jesus. God sent the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The sun and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run the patience, the race, we shall know joy of Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all.
Brothers and sisters, go in peace, for Almighty God is with you, now and forever. Amen.